Hey there, folks. This is Richard. Before we get to Jeffrey and I talking about The Dark Power from 1985, I just wanted to remind you of the fact that episode 200 is on its way. If you want to contribute to episode 200, you want to call in and tell us your favorite episode, you want to give us a top 10 list of movies you want us to talk about, if you just want to hear about a single movie, you can do that too. If you just want to give us a shout out, if you want to give us sweet financial advice in these trying times, that is also welcome. DoomedMovieThon at gmail.com. The last day you can call in is March 23rd, 2020. So if you're listening to this classic episode in the year 2698, it's too late. You missed it doomedmoviethon at gmail.com mp3s m4as mkvs and if you don't want to do anything technological write it on paper and then type it into an email you can also just do emails but that's it from me let's get to this movie talking on with the show Well, hello again. Oh, excuse me, I, I just came in to flush down a few butts. Didn't realize there's already a couple of butts in here. Yeah. Hey, hey! Listen, asshole. You better watch your P's and Q's and mind your manners. You got that, scumbag? <laughs> Everything is ready, my darling. Do not be afraid. And we'll be together again. Okay? This is all the whiskey you possess? <laughs> you should believe in ghosts, pea brain. He's a closet! He's a closet! He's a closet! Hello, and welcome to Hello, This is the Doom Show. I am Richard. I am joined by Jeffrey, who contains all of the darkness and all of the power. These are the dark days now, I've heard. Oh, these are? These Shit. are yeah. It starts to it started today. Can I thought 1985 it? was the darkest time ever. So say the Toltecs, the ancient <laughs> Toltec calendars. Ah, <laughs> uh, folks, we are talking about the Dark Power from 1985, which came out in '88 in <laughs> Japan. <laughs> so they say. Uh, this is directed by the one and the only Phil Smoot, <laughs> which sounds like smooch. It also sounds like smut. He's smut, but with a smooch at the end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm trying to adjust my chair, please. Sorry. <laughs> if you hear me shake, rattle, and, and rolling, it's because of that. Also, folks, we have kittens in this house now. Oh. So in case you hear some total oh. bonkers noises, for once, it's not me. It's the kittens. <laughs> I mean, you, it's, you're saying that as if there aren't just normally bizarre sounds that are occurring on your side of the conversation. <laughs> These are just come out of my body. Pretty regularly, yeah. For once, something didn't come out of my body. <laughs> Yet. We got time. I found one of those really long trailers for this film mm. that is th over three minutes. Shows the entire movie, so I'm going to play... Just a little bit of it. I might, I might <laughs> give us a trailer for the trailer, please. <laughs> Folks, if you aren't ready for committing to three minutes, here's the 30 second version. Go. It was the perfect house. It had everything they could ever want. Room. Comfort. And a deadly secret. Uh, it's guarded by four Indian sorcerers. That girl, you better watch out, honey. Toltec sorcerers were bad dudes. The Toltecs? Why was Cody so obsessed with the Toltecs? Toltec. <laughs> hey, weird company. What are you doing here? Well, I know what I'd like to be doing here. Oh, oh my God! The biggest falcon now, Beth! <laughs> All right, you demonic bastard. Let's take this outside. Drink up, boys. The party's just beginning. Oh, 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 
It looks like the neighborhood is going to hell. So that that was the trailer for The Dark Power. Um, We're going to spoil this movie because, good lord. But it's okay. Uh, I'm seeing on IMDb that uh, uh, an IMDb user put this on their could not finish list. So (laughs) odds are, if you try to watch it, you might you might not finish it. If you like women screaming for prolonged sequences, if you like whips, whoosh. Yeah, I'd say mostly if you like whips. This is the movie for you. Urban Dictionary. Let's see. Are you going to look for smoot? No, I'm looking up. Well, I'll do that second. Let's look, <laughs> okay. up, let's look up whip. Well, like Ghost Ride the Whip. I'm hit. I'm cool. Uh, I am not. So I'm sorry. Wait a minute. Hold on. They're getting hit with a lot. Ooh, they got an error. Reload to try again. I think I think Urban Dictionary has been hacked. Oh no! Oh my God! Now and and there I have been hacked because Lietta's watching Hackers right now without me. Wow! What we the should fuck? just pause and go watch Hackers and then come back. I know, dude. I know. Ah, <sighs> the plague, everybody. Okay, so the definition of whip is it's a dance move, and uh. it, it can be a, a car. Yeah. Oh my God! This is boring. Oh, I'm so sorry. So let's look up Smoot. Oh my god. Oh my god. Is it <laughs> is there is it real? There's many, many definitions of Smoot. Well, what's the best one? I'm trying to find the least filthy one. Oh no. Oh jeez. Ah, Smoot, Smoot, goddamn. Let's see, there's vagina clean vaginas. That's nice. Yeah. The wetness that you get on your finger when you scratch your ass crack. I don't need to know about the lives of the people who write these things, but I know I feel like they're telling on themselves. There's a game called Smoot that's basically like tag. That's nice. Hmm. Oh, Feeling pretty no. smooth myself. Yeah, this just gets dirtier and dirtier. I I thought I saw a good one, but now I don't know. <laughs> anyway, folks. Thanks for listening. We'll get back to you another day when I don't fail as a podcaster by going to UrbanDictionary.com. It's an educational program. That's right. So, folks, the dark power I, I have in front of me, scanned by some very kind soul on the internet. Uh, this is the dark power VHS distributed by ABC Films in the UK. Always be crappy films. <laughs> Always be anti-racist. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes. Here we go. Ranger Gerard is sitting at the deathbed of an Indian friend or lover when he hears the legend of the ancient Toltel Toltel sorcerers. What? It's it was Toltec, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, the VHS cover doesn't give a fuck. Oh, boy. <laughs> a thousand years ago, these cannibals buried themselves alive and have continued to feed on the living in order to survive. Not sure about the cannibalism. Oh, no, there's cannibalism. Oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah. With his dying breath, the Indian begs Gerard to take up his place in the battle against these fiendish demons. I mean, that's not true. <laughs> Jeffrey, he <laughs> pleans with Gerard to protect <laughs> others. Well, that's true. <laughs> hey, the English may have invented English, but they don't have to use it. Oh, my God. To protect others against the evil days to come, comma, when the spirits will mount their attack, comma, to conquer the four corners of the earth, period. Gerard sets out to honor his friend's last wish to fight this terrifying menace he is called upon, comma, to protect a group of unsuspecting college students, comma, who have rented a secluded house haunted by the murderous spirits. So, I mean, that's <sighs> not true. I mean, it no. broadly gets it right, but... His what last wish is just the word Toltec. Yeah. That is not all of what was just poorly expressed. The The tagline on the front is your appointment with fear. Your is capitalized, but then the rest of the letters are all capitalized. So I don't know. This is confusing. <sighs> ABC Films. VHS. Collector's side. <laughs> I'd love to know what else these fuckers distributed. Let's see. Mm-hmm. Or you should put UK in there. That's oh, it's happening. What? <laughs> the comic. The murder is no laughing matter. What is that? I've never heard of that. ABC Films presents the comic starring Steve Monroe, Bernard Plant, and Jeffrey Pyre. Okay.
Are you cracking a brewski? You bet. Yeah, you boy. It's uh, dark days. <sighs> this movie starts with a bang, right? Like a literal bang. Sorry, I'm just getting lost in these VHS covers. I shouldn't do this. Sorry. <laughs> I mean, if there's anything interesting there, go for it. Yes, yeah, so we get opening titles, uh, which which talks about what's going on. Uh, before the white man, we've got Toltecs. Yes. Toltecs are evil sorcerers who bury themselves in the ground alive. They practice this demonic ritual in a high ground called Power Spots. The, my favorite part of these this opening crawl is uh is when it reads quote they fed on the living to sustain their evil with four exclamation points oh so they did cannibalize yeah oh yeah okay and we see them cannibalize a little bit a little bit we also see them like drink beer or is it soda i don't it was, know it was wine oh it was wine that's right that's the infamous uh kitchen trashing scene but can we trust that that was wine are we sure that it wasn't like somebody like relieved themselves in the bottle <laughs> I feel like 50-50 chance. <laughs> There's some characters in this movie that relieved themselves in bottles. <laughs> yes. This movie takes place somewhere in the southeastern United States, um, which is a bit of a plot point. Uh, <laughs> I think it's because that's where they had to film. Do we have a filming location here? Yes. Uh, they filmed this in Bellows Creek, North Carolina, okay. USA. Yeah. So here's something about the dark power, Uh, particularly in the first, I'd say, hour. The horror stuff doesn't really start until about an hour in. Exactly. I'm I'm, I'm being, I guess, maybe like 45 minutes, 50 minutes (laughs) in, but it's pretty close. Uh, Before then, it is made of almost wall to wall exposition. Yes. (laughs) And it's uh, considering much of it is delivered by like one of two characters. And one of them is uh, our hero, Lash LaRue. Despite the fact that Lash LaRue uh, was born in Louisiana, apparently. Well, actually, maybe that makes sense because he sounds a bit like a French Elmer Fudd. Uh, You know who he reminded me of? (laughs) The one armed man. From uh, Twin Peaks, oh. season three. I mean, not you know, he was a character in a little bit, all the little seasons, bit. but he's got the look. Especially the old when we came back to the return, he looked like him a little bit. So, so Lash Larue was a famous, uh, well, moderately yeah. famous uh, Western actor in the uh, '40s and the '50s. I think. Mm-hmm. Well renowned for his uh, uh, whipping abilities. That's why they, that's why they call him Lash. In his IMDb page, it starts by saying, quote, He looked so much like superstar Humphrey Bogart that character actress Sarah Patton asked if the two were related. Lash said he didn't think so. After a long pause studying the young actor's face, she asked, Did your mother ever meet Humphrey Bogart? What the fuck? So apparently Lash LaRue, he could have uh, he could have starred in the French sex murders if only he should <laughs> capitalize. <laughs> yeah, you know. <laughs> Hey, man, there was not enough whipping in that movie. So, mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> Fuck. Missed opportunity. So, yeah, lots of exposition. But at one point in the film, they actually make the point of saying, because the Toltecs were, uh, they were Southwestern. Basically, Mexico uh... is where they were. And they were sort of <laughs> supplanted by the Aztecs. So it's pretty weird that they could be found so far to the east and the movie makes a point of saying like you know gerard says like yes i know it's implausible but uh you know uh john cody really believed it so it must be true we are they're buried in his fucking yard (laughs) so yeah john cody's right he was right (sighs) yeah we get it we get this vigil we get a camera crew we get lash (laughs) larue and a couple other i just call i wrote vigil with the white man Mm -hmm. as they're waiting for him to pass away not asking him any questions, not no. getting. So they're there to like film a story about his living will. Yes. They have a copy of the will in front of them. But yeah, but it's like empty and they're yep. going to like yep. write it down. But uh. so he doesn't get to say anything. He just gives his uh, his last his last breath, the, the word Toltec. And then he drops his uh, his skull with an eagle on it. And folks at home, this is the first of many scenes in this movie it's not featured in any of the Stephen King books. I just want to get that out of the way. It's a very loose adaptation 
of the Dark Tower series. Oh, I don't know. I read the first four of those. I don't know. Did you see what I did there? Uh, it's pretty funny. No, I, don't, I actually don't understand. Because this is the Dark Power. Oh, the Dark And I was power. pretending this was the Dark Tower. Ah. See, Jeffrey, too funny for words. Oh, you're too clever. All of, all of them. So he croaks, he says Toltec, and then we get stuck, the movie gets stuck on this sign for Sammy and Earl, the Fix-It Brothers. Yeah, for a Toe Jam and Earl, the Fix-It Brothers. <laughs> While this lady's yelling at her kid in the house for a long time. I love their slogan. Uh, if we can't fix it, throw it away. <laughs> How about no? I don't trust you fucking slobs because do we ever meet Sammy? We don't. We meet Earl. We don't meet Sammy. Sammy's like, um, he is laid up. He's got like, I think he's like dying of an illness. Okay. We meet a different fix it guy. We, we meet a construction, a surly construction worker later. That's not Sammy. Is Earl is taking care of even, oh my God, I can't. So there are lots of plot threads that just sort of disappear at various <laughs> points. Um, one of them is that Earl uh, is taking care of Sammy's son. Yeah. Yep. Who is his nephew named yep. Cletus. <laughs> oh, Cletus is, is young me. Cletus is the hero of the film, I guess, technically. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I just took one look at him and wrote in my notes. Oh, look, I'm in this movie. <laughs> It's like a little kid I want to beat to death. It must be my childhood self. But we don't meet Cletus for a while. First, we meet this uh, this random kid whose mother is yelling at him. Oh, my God. That wasn't... That was a different kid? I don't think it's Cletus. Oh, my fucking God. I, I mean, I guess even... it could be, but I'm not sure. No, I think you're right. I hate children. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm child face blind, so <laughs> I actually don't know for sure. They all look like me, so I hate their guts. <laughs> Look like you today. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm so youthful. You're so youthful. Now, I only recognize this boy because he's just like pathetic and crying. Yeah. Because uh, he, he's That's a me. little weirdo. He has no friends, I guess. So he, he hops off down a wooded path shooting plunger arrows. Yeah, arrows with the little rubber tips on them. <laughs> but he's shooting them at the air. He's not even shooting them at anything. What a cool which is kid. sad. And all throughout the scene, as he's doing this, he's being pursued by um, what looks like the Evil Dead uh, Deadite camera. Yes. But turns out to be a pack of dogs. Not a very threatening club of dogs. No. They they all look like pretty cuddly. And happy. Yeah. Yeah. But, <laughs> but they do chase him, I guess, because they're just like, well, I mean, we wouldn't normally do this, but pretty easy prey here. <laughs> We just hate this kid won't taste his meat on his bones. <laughs> He's saved by our boy uh, Ranger Gerard, a.k.a. <gasps> Flash whoosh, LaRue. Whoosh, whoosh. Gerard saves them by uh, rubbing some peanut butter on the tip of his whip. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the dogs find this very distracting and well, The tip of his whip, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that scene. That doesn't really come back at all. There's lots of points in this movie where the movie comes to a complete stop, and this is one of those. The whipping scene, just go get a beer, dude. Well, okay, so here's my problem with this scene. I'm not going to say my I love this scene. Right, I would of course. say the problem with this scene is that, one, the dogs never factor back into it. These are not evil dogs. These are just like weird stray dogs, I guess. The boy, if he's not Cletus, also does not figure in. And even if he was Cletus, it wouldn't matter because Cletus is totally extraneous to the movie. Three, it doesn't really serve as a introduction to Ranger Gerard because we just met him in the previous scene. Yep. He's at the he's at John Cody's bedside. Mm -hmm. um, I guess what this scene really functions as is an introduction to the whip. <laughs> <laughs> Which um, is actually, now that I think about it, pretty badass. So I fully endorse this scene. Fair enough. <laughs> God, God buy in a technicality. God bless America and God bless whips. God bless the southeastern United States. <laughs> After our pal Cody has passed away, there's a lot of uh, debates and stuff going on about who's going to get his house and everything. And unfortunately for our pal Earl... Our good friend Earl, wonderful man. I do have to talk about Earl because the first time I watched this, I thought he was someone else. He Ooh. reminds me very, he's got the same energy as, he reminds me of uh, this guy who was in a few different um, Ernest movies. Uh, in Ernest Scared Stupid, they play the Tulip Brothers. 
Uh, oh, Bobby and Tom Tool. They sell them like all of the uh, all the troll hunting gear. Yes, but they were the guys that were in the episodes. Yeah, they except were in the... they replaced. He wasn't the same guy as in the show because mm. on the Ernest show it was a different dude. Okay, so this is the one he reminds me of is John Cadenhead. Because that's see that's what's so f- funny. That's a different actor than the one that played him on the the other show. Interesting, because they're in. A, I think they're in another movie too. Ernest Scared Stupid. Is it just Ernest Scared Stupid? But the other dude, the, his his brother was in all of the shit. From yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, he's got the more recognizable face. It's just it's more it's less the look and more the energy of this guy. I I just destroyed IMDb. <laughs> uh, easy to do. Oh my god, this is fun. Gaylard Sartain. Or Gaillard Sartain. That is, that's a, that's a Lash LaRue of a name. <laughs> he was the one that was always in all the, the Hey Vern, It's Ernest shows. Mm-hmm. And then he was in the other, for some reason, I guess he couldn't play his, his famous character in Ernest Scared Stupid, which is bonkers. Yeah. What the fuck was he doing? Uh, starring in The Dark Power. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, Exactly. He, this actor, though, is just like the dude we're talking about. His wild overacting abilities. Mm-hmm. Uh, he also is known for playing sensitive white man in this movie. Uh, he's, <laughs> he's sure very angry about all of these priceless Native American artifacts that are tucked away in a closet. Uh, a closet who, that he uh, wouldn't even take a dump in. He tells us. <laughs> Yeah, and he talks about how much it stinks, and I just want to strangle the movie at this point. Here's what I gotta say, though. There's no way to prove that he hasn't already taken a dump in that room. <laughs> in, in every room in that house. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, my this is another. This is another scene. It's just the closet, and it's just, like, one angle in a closet. And it goes on and on. It goes on. Yeah, because it's another, it's another scene full of exposition. So, like, he, they, he finds Cody's trinket, which is this eagle plus skull stake. Um, which we learn is a symbol of dark power. Um, the eagle controls the dark power. This whole scene answers all the questions that we ever needed answered, right? I wrote this down with quotation marks around it, so I'm imagining somebody, this is a direct quote. I think it's from Earl. He says, quote, what would we do without an eagle? <laughs> and then he, uh, of course, to, just to close it out, you know, he casually drops the N-word and uh, casually proposes breaking treaties with Native Americans. Ah, oh, um, The weird thing is that this guy later on is actually, like, one of the sympathetic characters towards uh, the only African-American character in the film. Yeah. Which is weird, because I guess we see, I guess we see what he's like behind uh, closed uh, closet doors, right? <laughs> he's closeted racist. Like and, uh, and trinket closets, yeah. <laughs> One of the people who who wants this land is a, is a, is a relative of Mr. Cody, and this is David Cody. Uh, he he is a <laughs> he is a totally irrelevant to the movie. Now that I think yes. about it, <laughs> yes, I'm I regret mentioning him. Uh, he he is a Native American who does not care about uh, the traditions that his his crazy uncle was he his uncle? Uh, no, he's the grandson. Grandson. Okay, so he's even more of an asshole because you know grandsons are terrible as we all know well yeah so his story definitely doesn't pay off because he pretty much disappears at a certain yep. point and he like it's not like he gets comeuppance he's not killed by the toltec sorcerers or anything like that which should've would been. absolutely should have been right because he doesn't respect his heritage yes. uh, well or a heritage because john cody's not supposed to be of toltec descent right he just i don't think so i think he was just protecting against them yeah he knew that the toltecs were in this region and wanted to protect people from them i think that's it but even then like you know this guy is trying to just make a buck off of uh this land that is protected land but i think the whole point of this character and like this scene is just to show us that (laughs) that lash larue is way more in touch with indian mysticism uh than uh and the actual native american character yeah he he's really he really misses his friend he had a real bond with this guy who died and he sure did obviously they were lovers no problem yeah i like it but uh yeah there's a bunch of discussion about why he wants this house and how it's gone to him because of course there's no living will so he's going to turn this into a rental property <laughs> fuck 
<laughs> oh my god we'll get to that when we get to that betraying your grandfather's uh will to become a uh, petty landlord great perfect perfect tells us a lot about him it's what your ancestors wanted Mm -hmm. then stuff happens and i thought uh gerard was on a date with uh (laughs) with this reporter i really thought you would be uh totally and it's totally fair that you would think that because this journalist is dtf if ever (laughs) i've seen someone she is oh my god hard she's like here's a direct quote some girls might be crazier about whips than others. Oh boy, oh boy. You know, and she 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 there's also a lot of exposition of course in this scene. Um she uh, describes like his job, what he does in like very specific detail. Uh, I guess he's like a sexy animal tracker and capturer who like, you know, captures the wild animals and oh puts, them in, puts them in safer spots oh my god <laughs> and you know he just sort of like bumbles through some of this like oh ho, ho, you sure are a good reporter blah, 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 blah. she's also in, in addition to being a uh a ranger gerard uh expert she is also a um a toltec expert because she gives us a little bit of an info dump about them. She's apparently just been doing multiple stories on these two topics. <laughs> Ranger <laughs> Gerard and Toltec history. Oh, man. Hey, that's her pursuing her dream job. How, who are we to judge? Did we introduce her? This is uh, Mary, right? Mary, yes. This is Mary, reporter Mary, played by Mary <laughs> M. Dalton, star of this movie. Yeah, you know, that's the case for most people in this movie. <laughs> uh, but she did work on the director's other magnum opus, uh, freaking Alien Outlaw. She was a production coordinator on Alien Outlaw. So, oh wow, and a casting director. Oh my goodness. Well, she in this movie appears to know everyone, but we don't really know what her relationship to anyone is. Mm. Like we'll see her very soon, uh, sort of recruit our main cast, which is a bunch of um, college girls, to go live in uh, John Cody's abandoned, or uh, not abandoned, but newly rented house. But we don't have any idea how she knows them. Like she's not a relation. Yeah. Before that, like they cut jarringly from this date to them interviewing uh-huh. Mr. Lash Larue <laughs> on the camera, and. In order to get the cameraman's attention, uh, he whips him, <laughs> nearly whips him in the face. Everybody is giving this camera operator so much shit. Dude, like, he nearly, funny. like, whips his nose off. But she, like, keeps harassing him about, like, are you filming it correctly? Oh, my lord. Why did we have green tape last week? And he's just like, I know how to do my job, just leave me alone. <laughs> And then they, like, she's giving him shit so much that she has to be reminded what she's there for. <laughs> she's enjoying it so much. So then we cut really jarringly to the church where I just wrote in my notes, what is going on? And this is where uh, Mary is uh, recruiting her friends mm-hmm. to live in this house. This is important, folks. We're going to try. I know I'm going to try. Jeffrey, you are under no obligation to try <laughs> to keep these characters unconfusingly separated from each other these ladies Uh, i know most of them um so we're we're introduced to beth who is sort of our hero yes she's like our our final girl here she is our heroine one of one of our final girls yes (laughs) she is not able to dorm with her friends because she got a bad like housing raffle number i guess so now her option is just instead of live with strangers, oh, I have no home. Got to go live in a uh, <laughs> in this weird uh, this weird house out in the middle of nowhere uh, because she gets hooked up with Lynn, who she doesn't want to live with. Like no, her no mother sort Lynn. of sets it up. Nobody likes Lynn. And as we'll see very shortly for a very good reason. Uh, but she decides to go along with it because uh, Beth is like, uh, well, Beth Beth really sells the place. She says, the place is, quote, like new. <laughs> <laughs> I would say if I bought this house on eBay and somebody said like new, I would be very upset. <laughs> <laughs> she also describes it as, quote, a little peninsula kind of thing. 
And she does also say, you know, it's guarded by four Indian sorcerers, witch doctor types, you know, oh, they worship the dark powers, blah, blah, blah. Oh, no. <laughs> but they're like, hey, come on, Beth, take a chance, right? <laughs> Turns out this chance uh, kind of bitter in the, in, the, in the butt. I'm just looking at the acting credits of these of these ladies. Well, I don't believe that anybody was really in anything except for Lash LaRue, right? Uh, well, actually... <laughs> Uh, the girl we're about to talk to, Tammy. So Tammy is our is is our black friend, and she's one of the coolest people, if not the coolest person in the movie. Yeah. And you know her and her and Beth are, are good pals, and her and Susan are also they get along. Of course, you know Tammy and Susan. Yeah, these two other roommates, they are the best characters in the movie. They're very cool. Yes. Um, uh, L- Lynn. Let's just emphasize she does not represent anyone she does not represent the feelings and thoughts of anyone when i looked at her credits i was very um surprised to see that lynn had not been anything else because i feel like she looks exactly like somebody that we've seen in many horror movies uh but i can't pick out who tammy is played by cynthia bailey who has been acting ever since not a lot uh but she was in such classics as Without You, I'm Nothing from 1990. I don't know what that is. Uh, but she was also in The Cosby Show for an episode. Uh, don't forget uh, Sharknado 4. Oh, shit. The Fourth Awakens. <laughs> have you seen any of the uh, Sharknado films besides the first one? I have not. I'm holding out for Zombie Tidal Wave that's coming out pretty soon. I heard that there was a clown NATO yes, coming. Yes, I've heard of that, but I don't know. If, I've not seen it interested in a cloud nato i would watch cloud nato uh she was in an episode of uh life twirls on and uh jaheim chase forever okay baby oh these are music videos hey look at that well i mean she's worked more than most people in this cast she's That's worked the... more than everyone in this movie except lash larue who's yeah. also dead yep so she wins <laughs> Yeah, good for you. Uh, she doesn't want to move in. She thinks the house is spooky. She knows all about these this this Toltec bullshit. Yeah, she's another Toltec expert. She's like, she, direct quote, uh, Toltec sorcerers are bad dudes. Yep. Um, I believe uh, this is another quote from Tammy. Uh, we need to stress that Tammy is awesome. Uh, she Another line from her, quote, you're talking my kind of trash now, lady. <laughs> Yes. That is that is a quote that will uh, enter my uh, conversational repertoire. Oh yeah. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> my favorite thing is uh, once we were introducing all these ladies and all the pieces are falling into place. I began to have a very peculiar sensation, a very um, familiar deja vu kind of a feeling, and I wrote in my notes. Oh, this is turning into a real boarding house situation oh, here. Oh, for sure. Oh, I mean, my God. Doubly so when we have a, uh, well, I mean, in a very, in the opposite direction when we have a man move into the house. Mm. Lord almighty. He must have seen boarding house and then figured out this is how you behave around a mm. house full of women. So this is a thing I'm a little confused about, though, despite having seen this film a few times. So we have Susan. Now, Susan, like, all right. So Susan is the one who likes to work out. We see her working out once, and then she does a lot of, like, stretching and, and like, very high-waisted uh, underwear at various points. Mm-hmm. Uh, she's uh, preparing for her date with uh, Tom Selleck or Arnold Schwarzenegger, depending on what mood she's in. Um, so we have we have Susan, we have Tammy, we have um, Beth, we have Lynn, but then there, I think there's somebody else, right? There's another woman, because there's the woman who takes the bath, like, we've got... Do you remember that? Yes. I don't know who that actress is. I, I don't know who that is. No idea. They do not introduce that character. Not yeah, that I can remember. If, if, she, if they do, I'm paying attention. Uh, but I think she lives there, or I guess. I mean, why would you take a bath there if you didn't live there? Um, but yeah, I don't think... Because she doesn't show up later. She's not killed at any point. I don't think... I wonder if it's a situation like where like they they wanted a nude scene, which clearly they did, but yes. none of the actresses wanted to do it, so they got somebody else, the random Bring in a friend. Ringer. I guess so. I don't really know. It's weird. Very weird. Um. So I do have something I want to talk about here. Yeah. This apartment, excuse me, this house is a freaking pop culture 
freaking zenith <laughs> for the 80s. Um, here are just a few things. Yeah, what'd you notice? Because I got a few, yeah. We got uh, some Diet Coke. Uh, lots of Diet Coke. That's timeless. A Star Trek poster. Uh, I believe it's the motion picture. It's the motion picture or Wrath of Khan. Probably the motion picture. Yeah, it's got that vibe. It's got the motion picture vibe. I've got a young Frankenstein poster. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think there's a Godfather poster. And there's a right. Bud Light poster. Well, there's the Bud Light um, neon sign. That's it. That's it. Yes. Um, there's also a Scrooge McDuck plush. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> there's that. also there's some other Disney characters, but the Scrooge McDuck really stood out to oh me. Oh, my God. It's so great. Now, I don't. I think this house came decorated. These were, <laughs> Those were Mr. John Cody's decorations. Yeah, these were his things. <laughs> Oh. Um, that reminds me. So I like the idea of John Cody being very insistent that those cannot be taken. <laughs> <laughs> I watched uh, the movie The Intruder last night, the one from this year with uh, Dennis Quaid. Yes, where he's like, uh, he like sells his house but won't leave it, and oh uh, he Lord. gets he gets really upset when they take down this tapestry he had right over his bed. That's like really awful, and just has this uh, this <laughs> this embroidery of like this old looking child, <laughs> and he gets really really mad when they take it down. What? That's what it reminds me of. I like th- I like this idea. This is my head cannon. John Cody, huge Scrooge McDuck. Star Trek the motion picture fan. Who wouldn't be? The opposite of the pleasure of Diet Coke is the um, uh, ridiculous racism of Lynn, which we, oh, we've Jesus. tiptoed around but haven't really dealt with. What a fucking piece of garbage. Now, you and I were talking before we started recording about, you know, this movie has a, kind of an anti-racist message to it because, spoiler Thank alert, yeah. the, the, the racists get murdered. Right. But what about the rest of it? Okay. <laughs> So Lynn, Lynn and uh, eventually her brother, what's the brother's Ooh. name? Craig? Yeah, Craig. Ugh, Craig. Uh, they're going to be introduced soon. And Craig's friends too. They're all racist. They're all pieces of shit. But the movie acknowledges them as racists and pieces of shit. So that's good. Um, and they get killed, which is good. Especially because this is uh, uh, 1985. We're ta- Well, I mean, it's 2019 and we still have some of these issues. Uh, what? But we never, cured that in the nineties. Nevertheless, um, and I mean the, the film is like clearly loves Tammy. Um, you know she's, I think the film's favorite character as it should be. Um, it's weird. It's actually unfortunate they didn't just make her the the hero of the movie, but she's pretty mm-hmm. close. She's pretty close. I mean Beth Agreed. is like a, Beth is a nothing. I mean she's just there. But the movie, I mean, pretty racist against Toltecs. <laughs> yeah. Now, granted, do any Toltecs exist? From uh, my, uh, I'm not, I'm no Toltec expert like everybody <laughs> else in this movie. But yeah, Toltecs don't exist anymore. And I would actually say that though we do learn that John Cody, the Native American man, experienced a lot of uh, uh, racism in his life. Like he was, uh, I guess, the townspeople were very mean to him. Like teenagers would come and like cause mischief on his property (sighs) the movie does say like yeah he he was right and he was trying to protect people and is a hero even in death so i mean that's something but yeah i mean i guess if you're really feeling like uh (laughs) if uh if like toltec culture means a lot to you i guess this would be a a little racist i don't know (laughs) <laughs> Again, I don't think Toltecs exist anymore. No, they definitely don't exist. I mean, a movie, I don't know. It's still a little, it's still a little. It just, it, it's not right. Yeah, it's definitely othering. Yes. Uh, uh, Big past time. civilization. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> even if they're long gone. So, I don't know. Weird movie on that count. But I do appreciate its anti-racist message, at least in one, one small avenue. Yes. So let's go to the library, shall we? Let's go to right to special collections, and we'll 
we'll look so th- at some bound volumes of to- Toltec info. It's actually the courthouse. Library, Land grants? Is that? Oh, God, it's even more yeah. boring than the library. Yeah, it's not even like a cool Let's library. Let's go to the public department. <laughs> they don't even have any magazines there. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I hate libraries. Fuck. <laughs> Stupid. You're quitting your job tomorrow. That's right. Bye, everybody. Nice work on you. Goodbye. I think they'd have a party. Anyway. So, Beth Beth and Gerard go to the courthouse library. Well, actually, okay. So, Gerard had... Okay. Gerard... (laughs) This is so... There's so much goofy shit that matters (laughs) not at all. (laughs) So, um, Gerard has some courtroom adventures. Uh, because he, in his duties as a ranger, had to stop, like, these hicks from shooting noisy fish in LA. <laughs> what? <laughs> and, what uh, so he meets up with Beth, out- no, Mary, I'm sorry, Mary, Met the reporter Mary, outside of the, um, uh, the courthouse, but then they decide, like, oh, we're gonna go into the courthouse and go down to the library and research Toltec stuff. Um, so they meet somebody who this they... guy do we know his name? name i never got he's so freaking boring and <laughs> he does not figure into the plot at all well it seems like he's going to i mean the only thing we uh, the most significant thing we know about him is that he is another toltec expert number one and two he is a math and a history major <laughs> yes that confused lieta as well at one point mary is like i'm gonna hook you up with beth but nothing really becomes of that Oh my god, I think I found him. It was Tony Elwood who plays Courthouse Student. Oh, Tony Elwood does something else on this movie, I think. Oh does he Lord. not? Yeah, he's he was a, a makeup supervisor on the film. He... This looks like him. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe all, all yeah, white people all look the same. I don't fucking know. No, he was makeup supervisor. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's, that's him. That's probably I'm dying him. inside. Yeah, it's Courthouse Student. That's definitely him. Okay, so, yeah, uh, <laughs> we learn a couple other things in this scene. Uh, this is actually kind of hilarious. Uh, John Cody, the Native American uh, 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 man who owned the house, wanted all of the... So he believed that Toltecs were in this region, despite, the, Im- the again, the improbability of that. They're in Totem Hill. He took Totem Hill, he took possession of Totem Hill, made it protected, and wanted any uncovered artifacts now or in the future uh to be given to the navy and buried at sea <laughs> why <laughs> what that's great and my favorite thing is that so much of this exposition has been given to lash larue to yes. give to us which again is just french elmer fudd dude <laughs> they're setting up the sequel where all where the uh, the Toltecs attack a freaking navy ship trying oh. to dispose of the uh, things at sea. That's the sequel. So it's the Toltec Galleon. Yes, oh, I love it. I Very love nice. It. <laughs> Armando De Osorio was going to help out. <laughs> so back at the uh, uh, casa, we have uh, <laughs> Susan doing some stretches, some sexy stretches in the kitchen. Mm. While microwaving some chow and meeting Shade's turtleneck himself, Craig. Craig. Uh, A.K.A. Lynn's brother, who to get back at the other girls for uh, so insensitively inviting an African-American woman to live with them, has invited her terrible lech of a brother to live with them. Oh my god. another roommate. So, you know, this is not a boarding house scenario because in boarding house, the one man living in the house was beloved by all. Inexplicably, but beloved by all. Everybody hates Craig, as they yes. should, because he's Good a Lord. piece of shit. You know what's funny about Craig? He's uh, played by Mark Matney, who was a voice actor for anime all <laughs> through the frickin' 80s and 90s. <laughs> Oh my god, Urasa Yatsura, Crusher Joe, Lupin the Third, Bubblegum Crisis. Bubblegum Crisis is a cool Oh my goddess, you're under arrest. Title. Kite, what the fuck? Wow, I want to see Bubblegum Crisis, that sounds cool. Classic sci-fi anime right there. I think it has the one where the, a dude coughs up a spoon. I, I might be missing, might be misremembering that, but it was funny. Nice. Good times. 
Speaking of more pop culture things, uh, there's also a Blues Brothers poster in, in these <laughs> scenes and a very tasteful Elvira Mistress of the Dark poster as well. Really? Oh, yeah, man. Wow. I didn't see that at all. Oh, wow. And your brain got erased by bath time. They're like, one day this this will probably be featured on uh, Elvira's show. <laughs> yes. They were, they were anticipating. Yeah. Dead wrong. <laughs> So we get the bath sequence where creepy Craig just walks into the girls having their bath time and shower time, respectively. And the, the yeah. girl who we have no idea who it is has her nude scene. Yeah, a random girl. And Beth's in the shower, but it's from the back. Yes. So it's not a nude scene. She did not get paid enough. As you said, there <laughs> were people who weren't willing to do nudity here. Well, I think as is often the case with these, it's like, it's like I'm not against a nude scene. But for this movie, come on! Uh, I don't know. <laughs> uh, luckily for us, Craig gets the shit kicked out of him by oh good old uh, Susan the Jock. Susan calls him a scumbag and gives him a fucking swirly, dude. Okay, she grabs his arm and twists it like you know those little holds they do in yeah. physical oh, yeah. activity things, like self defense or whatever yeah. it's called. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I've never participated in such things. You never had to self defend. Even when people throw popcorn at you, you've... Uh... Hey, don't fucking bring that up. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> twice. That happened twice in one night. <sighs> so anyway, folks at home, quick story. <laughs> oh no, I've unleashed the beast. I was forced to sit through a Weezer cover band who played their entire discography. <laughs> While the crowd went nuts and I went, fuck, this is the worst thing that's ever happened to me. And this girl went over to the popcorn machine. They had a popcorn machine at this venue. I have no idea why. She gets a huge, like, cup, like one of those, like, slurpy sized cups of freaking popcorn and is trying to talk to me. And I don't know what she's saying because it's loud. And then she throws the, the popcorn in my face and then walks away. And I'm like, well, that was weird. I don't know who that was. I don't know what just happened. And then she comes back with another cup and starts filling it up again. (laughs) And I'm like, okay. So I'm just ignoring her. She walks up to me, says something again. And I just gesture like, what are you doing? And she throws a second cup of popcorn. But this time the popcorn maker was almost empty. So it was just all oil and kernels at this point. So it's covered in frickin' butter, oil, and popcorn kernels. Still don't know who that girl was. Don't know what happened. She looked a little like Jerry Blank. (laughs) So she was really sexy. Oh, no. And, uh, yeah, I still don't know. And still the worst part of the evening was sitting through a (laughs) Weezer cover band. Well, I think uh, much like Craig in this situation, uh, you just had to mind your P's and Q's and your manners. That was the popcorn swirly I got. (laughs) So anyway, she grabs him by the arm, twists it, and just when you think she's going to throw him out of the room, you see her shoving his fucking face in the toilet. (laughs) Amazing. As as they will joke later on, um, he is being treated like a sanitary napkin. (laughs) Also, who's throwing a sanitary napkin in the toilet you're gonna come on i mean that place might be like new but if you do that you're gonna clog up them pipes well he was flushing his cigarette butts i don't think you're supposed to do that either i mean toilet paper only do we need to put a sign up yes Mm. put a sign up (laughs) i just hate people flushing their disposable what's the word prosthetics prosthetics yeah like oh my leg i flushed my leg Oh, no. I don't need it anymore. Not again. I don't know what I'm talking about. (laughs) Remember when I said that Lash LaRue looked like the dude who played the one-armed man in Twin Peaks? Call back to that? Well, he looks like that, but he sounds more like uh, one of the... um, Oh, God, what's their name? All the brothers. The Renaults. The Renaults. He sounds like a (laughs) Renault. Yes, he does. (laughs) Louisiana. I already have a French talking. French talking. Uh, we do have lots of cutaways throughout all this back to um, Gerard and his uh, his new wife, reporter Mary. Um, <laughs> and at one point wife. she describes him as having, quote, sensitive eyes. 
Um, which, you know what? Agreed. He looks like a sensitive man. She's a good actress. <laughs> because she's convincing you that she's actually attracted to this very yes. old man. She's going to get whipped. Reporter Mary is like under 30. Yep. And Lash LaRue is what? <laughs> I mean, he's like 80. He's, <laughs> oh, he's, he's like 60 God. something. Yes. Right. In, in 1985, uh, he was, oh my Lord, <laughs> he was 68. He's, Woof, all right. Yeah, not, not too far off from that 80. <laughs> it was a uh, a May-December or a May-February, May-March, I don't know. <laughs> he's like, he's like, uh, he's like New Year's Eve. Father Christmas, motherfucker. Yeah. But she's trying to set up that dude whose name we never get right. with one of the girls at the house. So she's playing, she's like, I'm quite the matchmaker. Blah, 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 blah. If by setting up you mean it's mentioned in that scene and they disappear from the movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Why doesn't... Oh, God, this movie. Nothing that's set up happens except for the Toltecs. Well, you would imagine, like, if all these people converged on the, the property, then there would be a, a much more opportunity for, like, chaos and bloodshed. But they yep. don't, they don't yep. do it. I mean, honestly, in some ways, I'm glad they don't because I like... I like where it goes from here. <laughs> well, um, yeah. We do have we do have one of our characters arriving at the house. It is our boy. Well, I don't know. Somebody's boy. Earl. Earl. Yeah. Earl. He's arriving to fix the toilet. Because guess what? Yep, that toilet's all fucked up. It's clerked up. <laughs> he shows up with Cletus, his, his not kid that's not his. And his Cletus is like, I want to drive a truck. I want to drive a truck. It's so fucking stupid. <laughs> Oh, and then of course, as they're going up to the house, Earl rips one big fart joke. <laughs> Good there's, God! There's there's another fart joke, but we're not there yet. Oh, or I'm going to say it's a fart joke, but there's a we'll bunch see. of there's a bunch of dudes partying. We get Craig and his buddies. Craig um, and his awful pals. Yeah, they're all terrible. There's two. Well, there's two of them. Yep. Uh, I don't know their names. I don't care. I don't think we need to say what their names are. Uh, there is one thing I will say about them. One of them is throughout the scene. They're just like partying in the living room, trying to intimidate all of the girls. And, uh, one of them is lying underneath the coffee table, clutching his beer. Yes. And that is, that's my style. Just like, cause he's like, <laughs> he's in, but like this, this coffee table has like, I think it has like a bottom and a top and he's like smudged in between. Oh, yep. it's beautiful. <laughs> oh man, he is a classy some bitch. He's we call that pulling a Jeffrey. Yep, not pulling a Jeffrey. They of course <laughs> make some terrible racist jokes. Yeah, no, um, trying to make Tammy uh, feel uncomfortable, um, and then Earl weirdly, despite clearly being racist piece of shit earlier, is actually like nice to tammy and beth and is like you know i'll take i'll take care of those boys don't don't you worry don't you worry i love it we then also have the again totally well okay i guess it does serve a function i, I keep doubting this movie but it keeps <laughs> having a reason uh, which earl has this monologue which turns into sol into a soliloquy he thinks he's talking to cletus it's a real cletus goes to college moment where he's talking about <laughs> cletus's future uh, it, i think he, he says the line at one point i'm gonna beat your bottom with a weed eater which is hilarious <laughs> that's just fun that's just fine but i'll tell you one thing if i ever catch you acting like one of them scrotum heads down the hall i'll beat your buns with a weed eater while he's fixing this toilet and he fixes it good, right? Because what is he going to do? Fix it bad? Cletus Amazing. sneaks off and steals the truck and drives away out of the movie, never to be seen again. <laughs> and in response to this, Earl sees him driving off and throws his wrench. And that's the thing that does it. It disturbs the earth. And when he goes to pick it up, a zombified hand pops out of the ground to grab him. And that's Dude. all. We never see Earl again. He throws his like wire strippers, like they're it's like those oh, it's not even a yellow, wrench. yeah, they're like yellow handled wire strippers mm. that you'd like clip the ends off of some wire. What would he be doing I, using that to fix a, a toilet with? It's so random. I think they picked it because the handle was just, like brightly colored. Weird, yeah, because it's at night. Weird makes a lot uh, of sense. Weird. He gets uh, he gets gotten because of course the the Toltecs have chosen to arise. 
And, well, uh, I mean, we do learn from a voicemail left uh, from reporter yes. Mary on Gerard's uh, yes. uh, phone that, uh, you know, she was hanging out with that, uh, that uh, what's his name? Tony Elwood boy. <laughs> and uh, they found out that, uh, you know, today's the start of the evil days. The evil days are here. <laughs> and they never left. We're still AKA in the evil days. 2012. 2019 man no no 2012 was the end of the mayan calendar yeah we but this, world... to- this we're in toltec time here what year is it it's okay it's okay uh... to stare <clears throat> into the star trek the motion picture poster yes and uh, lock eyes with elvira move on verger viger oh. viger <laughs> viger the first of our our wonderful toltecs uh shows up and is at the front door and one of the partying dudes goes whoa weird company <laughs> so the toltecs let's talk about the toltecs please for a moment. i thought there was um, only gonna be one i didn't know there'd be four. Oh yeah uh, there's four of them they're great um, i would say they all look like the neon maniacs doing yes! scalps cosplay um but it's even worse than that one of them looks like he's wearing like pajama pants he's like the lead oh my god he's the lead uh toltec but then another one's wearing like a cow hide like girdle they're so weird but yeah they have a very neon maniacs energy i wanted to put on neon maniacs during their whole thing like (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> not that their stuff isn't fun i want to make that clear that the shit that's going to happen from now to the end of the movie is pretty fucking fun but nothing like neon maniacs man yeah yeah man it's great go watch yeah. Neon maniacs and then Do watch it. the dark power oh speaking of scalps i've never seen scalps how is that one is that any worth watching or um yeah is it as i mean it's confusing as this one yeah uh, well, maybe a little bit less it's a little uh-huh. bit more straightforward i like it it's fine it's got a good desert setting um Ooh. it's a little bit slower in some regards um but i do enjoy it it's okay i mean it's extremely ra- it's way more racist than this one even because this one's got the the tinge of anti-racism and that one ah i see what you're getting does that. not um Yikes. yeah so the toltecs all four of them they're kind of like comedic they're pretty comedic, honestly. Very. Like they are, they are monsters who kill, but they're very goofy. The makeup on them sometimes looks okay. Like at the at the front door, I feel like it looks okay on that lead Toltec. Other times, looks pretty bad. They have I don't know if it's in all the shots or just some. They have like these sculpted in unmoving eyes, which are mm-hmm. not particularly convincing or no, good to look they're at. They're beautiful. Yeah, beautiful. they're sensitive eyes. <laughs> <laughs> the money they didn't spend on on these creatures' design work, they did put into some gore. They did. We get I mean, some the... nice uh, face ripping off, and some we we'll get some melting later. But the, one of the partying dudes gets his fucking face ripped off. It's wonderful. The gore is pretty good. Yeah, I guess this is as good a time as any to um, talk about Dean Jones, who is the special makeup effects artist. Okay, uh, let's talk about Dean Jones. Who has one of the most extensive careers of anybody. In, I mean, definitely he's the most extensive. Wow. Uh, okay. Well, actually, there's two. There's two people who have done quite a bit. So he's still working today. He's been a special makeup artist on things like the Neon Demon. <gasps> I think he was one uh, of the partiers. Oh, yeah, really? Yeah. Um, he worked on Ouija, um, Oz the Great and Powerful, X-Men First Class. Holy like some, shit. Pirates of the Caribbean movie. What the fuck? Uh, wow. <laughs> the Santa Claus 3. He worked on freaking He's done a few. Velvet? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's there's a lot uh, of Lynch connections here, actually. Terror Within. Yeah, he did a lot of um, some of that late Corman stuff in the 80s. Mm. Slumber Party Massacre 3. Oh, boysy. But then also a lot of Star Trek. Uh, like he did uh, uh, 6 and Insurrection and mm. he worked he worked a lot on deep space nine he did 85 episodes of deep space nine that's amazing yeah so he had a pretty cool career but here is where so he was the makeup department head on toby hooper's toolbox murders yes your favorite <laughs> your favorite movie hey but i remember that episode but he directed toolbox murders 2 Oh your, no! Oh, your no. double favorite movie. Coffin Baby! <laughs> Folks at home, look up my review. 
<laughs> Eurocultav.com. I know I how freaking, much you love it. <laughs> I gave that movie a scathing review. I hated that movie. Holy shit. Dean Jones, I'm sorry. Wow. So, pretty cool career, but we have somebody who has even a, has even a better career than that, but we'll talk about him later. Oh my god, yes, please. Uh, let's get to the kitchen trashing scene, because this is fucking wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> so, speaking of comedy, the, the one of the Toltecs, the main, I think he's the main Toltec? I'm not sure he's the one we yes, see first. Yes, he's the main, he's the one who survives. The he's band. their leader. <laughs> he <laughs> fucking trashes the kitchen. The girls are upstairs, they're thinking the partying's still going on, not I knowing Here's the thing, I don't even think they're dead. upstairs. I think they're in the room right next to the kitchen. Because oh. <laughs> when they walk out, like, I think one of their rooms is upstairs uh okay. i think maybe tammy's room is upstairs so maybe. i need to mention tammy's room for a second because tammy has a hawaiian mask a wooden mask hung up in her room that i have hanging up in my office right here next to what? me. what it is the exact same mask that's, i can't tell for sure that's too cool i am so you bought it on ebay sure. as like a uh no a certified prop from this movie no my parents uh, bought it from hawaii when they were there and they gave it to me wow. uh, so she's did got they, the they honeymoon in hawaii because no. my parents actually honeymooned in hawaii yeah no i don't i don't think so i don't know where they i don't pretty, know why they're pretty in hawaii. cool but uh yeah so i got tammy and me we're connected I'm pretty sure that Bats must be downstairs because I feel like when they run out to get the good silverware, it's <laughs> like just in the next room. <laughs> oh, God, it's so good. Uh, he's he's drinking wine. He's breaking plates. He's grunting. Stuff. Grunting he, a lot. He tried to eat something that wasn't good and he puked it up. And <laughs> it's, oh, my God. It goes on forever. It's almost as long as the the whipping scene coming up. <laughs> just kidding nothing was that long uh, all throughout this time the, the Toltecs have been chasing the others yes they kill uh, Lynn and the partying dudes and Craig and they unfortunately they kill Susan who deserved better oh, yeah I'm really upset about that one most of the kills are pretty boring it's just like there's one of the Toltecs who has a bow and arrow and he's just you know archering people to death mm -hmm. but we do have one of them i think this is the one who is it the one who escapes with lynn yeah yeah, yeah it is they try to escape on a boat lynn and <laughs> the surviving friend Artier. okay they they try they try to do that on a boat but the, one of the toltecs just grabs the the line that was tying it to shore and just pulls them back in because they're so stupid they didn't take that with them. One of the Toltecs rips this guy's arm off and then rips his face off. Yes. And it's really good. Dude, telling you. And then we do get a moment of um, catharsis also when uh, Craig has an arrow shot into his head. Yeah. Um, and then the archer Toltec comes and collects the arrow because he runs out of arrows. Um, mm -hmm. And he uh, pulls it out and it's got a little bit of brain matter on it. So he just like slurps it up, yeah. slurps it down. They're oh, cannibals. We get the comedic, uh, we get the comedic tomahawk scene. <laughs> where the, yep. the guy who, who's got the two tomahawks he whips them around and they actually added a little <laughs> to this to the uh <laughs> soundtrack to make you think he was spinning them but the actor who's playing the the toltec can't spin them <laughs> so he's just going <laughs> waving them around they add yeah. the spinning sound effect it's very cute but he goes to kill susan susan throws the tomahawk misses her completely and it goes into the stomach of his pal who's his like, pal oh. who already has a an arrow uh -huh. sticking out of him because he got hit by an arrow yeah earlier. so he's he i was hoping uh -huh. for a recurring thing where he would just have more and more, more objects and more damage that would be stuck to funny. him uh, alas i mean the, the best part is when the toltec who who is the axe thrower does a little shrug afterwards yep. like eh, what can you do sometimes you miss uh <laughs> the toltec's corner uh our pals uh Tammy and Beth in where else but the freaking uh, room. Oh yeah, before they get there though, uh, Beth, it looks like she's about to be assaulted by one of the Toltecs sexually. I'm not sure what he's doing to her on the on the uh, the pool table, and then Tammy jumps yeah. on his back. It's great. Yeah, and then they wrestle for a bit and end up trapped in the old trinket closet <laughs> where I wrote in my notes: this movie needs more screaming. Well, Tammy is very resourceful in this scene, though, because she figures out somehow 
that these little uh, eagle skull steaks are the best way to kill the Toltecs. Oh, because of the report on TV. She turns on little tiny TV by accident, <laughs> and it's the reporter, Mary, talking about the frickin' how to kill the things. That's yep. how she learns. It's yep. ridiculous. And the Toltecs, are, of course, are very distracted by the TV. With this, oh, it's uh, beautiful. 20th century technology. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then Tammy single-handedly kills three of them. Three of yes, the four. Such a badass. Yeah, she rules. Oh. Um, she's also, like, she's just super resourceful. Like, despite not being technically the final girl, because clearly, like, Beth is the, the hero, quote-unquote, Tammy is the one we want to root for here. She's she even at one hero. scene, like, when running away from the Toltecs, when she knows she needs to climb on something, she just brings a milk crate that's randomly in one room to another room so that they can stand <laughs> on it to climb through a window. She's just, like, prepared. Yes. It's like when you were in middle school and you were after watching Dawn of the Dead and you were planning what you'd do during a zombie invasion at any given time. Yeah, exactly. Love it. So they do, unfortunately, get cornered at one point by the, the, the main Toltec who breaks the last of the sacred objects that would kill him, the last dagger. I know. He breaks it so they can't kill him and that's when the most <laughs> the, the whippiest whip that ever whipped a whip comes a whipping. Direct quote, fear my whip, you son of a bitch. <laughs> and many other lines just like that. So so the Toltec is getting whipped by Gerard, who's come to save the day. And the Toltec grabs his whip because, of course, uh, Mr. Cody had saved a whip in his room of objects. And so they're going to have a whip down, a whip off. Ha <laughs> ha! Oh, actually, you know, we kind of got this out of order. Oh, good. I'm looking at my notes, I'm figuring it out. Because oh, he, fuck. Lash LaRue l- l- arrives a little bit earlier, like before the three Toltecs are dispatched by Tammy. Oh. Um, he pops up, but then he like gets knocked down and is unconscious for a while. That's um, right. But the funny thing is when he comes to, he just like shakes it off and goes, oh, I must be getting old. Yes. Which kind of just implies that he took a nap. Like he got, he got sleepy. <laughs> He's going to leave to go get the early bird special at fucking uh, Bob Evans and come back. Yeah. Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. I don't know. He might be more of a Denny's guy. Perkins. Yeah. It's, it's before he wakes up that Tammy kills the three of them. She has this yeah. great line where she says, quote, die, you corpse. <laughs> I miss that. That's great. <laughs> and when she stabs them with the daggers, they all stumble outside and then vomit blood up and then melt. Ooh, so yeah. we got some other They vomit really nice, green blood. We got some nice effects there, too. Yes. <laughs> so, yeah, this is it's after that point when it's only the one left that Lash LaRue wakes up from his, uh, his afternoon nap and is like, all right, you demonic bastard, let's take this outside. I believe and... it's around this time that Lietta asked the, the fateful question, oh, Jeffrey, what have you done? <laughs> well, you know, this is the entertainment that I crave, personally. <laughs> what I really want is a man dressed up in a uh, uh, in pajama pants, in zombie <laughs> makeup, whipping the air in front of him. <laughs> With an old man who used to be in Western movies. Ah, uh, I just screamed, what the fuck am I watching? The, this whip-off is three Unreal. minutes. It's very long. It's fucking crazy. So the thing about oh, two people with whips who are, like, yeah, whipping each other <laughs> is that most of it is them not whipping each other. They're just all. whipping the air. He's filling up the fucking running time with a bunch of bullshit. It's fucking hilarious. Lash LaRue has a really good line at one point where he says, uh, Oh, you're not doing so good with that whip. You want to switch weapons or something? Oh, my lord. <laughs> and then um, I think they do switch or something, because no. all of a sudden he says something to the effect of, Aha, this whip is working on you better or something. We, it's so no, many... no, 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 no. Um, he has, so he has that special um, whip that was given to him as by a gift Cody's. by John Cody. Oh. What he recognizes that is that once he actually hits him, which After he hasn't minutes. been doing, yes. yeah, it has an effect on him. Fuck. My favorite part of this scene is when the Toltec is at the top of a porch staircase I mean, he's he must be like six feet up in the air, and Lash Larue is down at the bottom, and they're like 
you know, they're whipping in opposite directions and clearly just, again, not hitting each other at all. And eventually the Toltec just kicks a bunch of trash cans down at him. Oh, my lord. Oh, this is some high-octane action. I love it. The last 15 minutes of this movie are three things. (laughs) The girls screaming and screaming and screaming and screaming and screaming and then screaming some more. Then the whipping and the whipping and the whipping and the whipping and then more whipping and fucking Lash LaRue's weird ass freaking commentary on the whip fight. <laughs> so he's, it's pretty great. He's got a few good lines there. He's like, you know, I wonder how you'd look without a nose. And then he whips the guy's nose off. Oh my lord. And then he whips the whip out of his hand. Then he whips his hand off and then yep. Just to seal the deal, he whips that final Toltec's head off. Boom. He pulls it off. Just a decapitation, man. Oof. It's, it's, it's kind of great. And then uh, we get our uh, our Coda at the end <laughs> of the movie here. Our John Coda. <laughs> hey Is this the funeral? What is it? What happens at the end? I don't remember. No, they're just like, it's the next day and they're just walking away. They're going onto a boat, it looks like. Oh, yeah, because it's a peninsula. But if it's a peninsula, you you don't really have to go on a boat. You could just go on the one part that's connected to the land. Anyway, uh, (laughs) it is uh, Lash LaRue just being like, you know what? The evil days have passed. You know, it's over. And he's talking to John Cody and his, uh, he kind of like walks off by himself. And he's talking to the ghost, the spirit of John Cody and says, you know what? Only God and you and I will really understand what happened here. And as a viewer of this film, I got to say, true. <laughs> you, sir, whose ex-lover passed away recently. Yes. He's I a widower. Think, yes, he's absolutely a widower. <laughs> More power to him. I love it. That's it. That's the movie wowzy wower whoa that was you picked it hey i did jeffrey how do you like this one um i love this movie (laughs) a lot just talking about it makes me realize how much i love it even more i feel like i can sum up this movie by a scene that happens uh, within it uh, just a shot really it's during the uh the lead toltec's uh kitchen rager (laughs) Uh, where he's knocking, he's like throwing plates down, drinking all the wine, chewing on cigarette butts, whatever he's doing in there. Uh, one moment, I think it's when he first walks in, he walks up to the window and sees on the windowsill a little carved figurine of a Native American man. And he just very sensually rubs his hand down it. And that's it. I feel like that sums up the movie. <laughs> I first saw this movie not too long ago. Maybe... A couple months ago, I watched the uh, the Riff Tracks version oh my on, God. Uh, on uh, Amazon Prime uh, and found it to just be uh, a blast. And then I, I knew, I think I, I texted you immediately after saying, uh, this is our next movie. You ever heard of it? I don't care if you've heard of it because we're going to watch it. <laughs> There's a lot of that on this show, folks. Jeffrey's <laughs> like, have you seen it? I don't care. Let's do it. And I'm like, okay. I mean, it's 100% our vibe. Yes. Uh, it's a, it's one of those, those cheapo single location, uh, to- like it kind of reeks of one of two things. Either Phil Smoot did not really have a very complete screenplay or Phil Smoot did not have money. So the movie feels incomplete in several aspects, but it's got just such, such heart to it. You know, it really <laughs> tries. <laughs> Yeah, it's everything I love. Totally, totally incomprehensible. It has a little bit of, you know, it kind of knows that it's a little goofy. You know, it does play up the comedy a little bit, um, but never, never leans into it so far that you can't enjoy the more inexplicable parts of it, if that makes sense. So how did you feel about this one? Uh, I liked it. I I didn't love it, uh, but I, I mean, I'll be damned if it's not a freaking fascinating fucking watch. <laughs> um, it's sort of like you were saying, it, you know, neon maniacs a little bit. Yeah. Uh, I did get the, the boarding house vibe from the, when they were introducing the girls, but they'd have to introduce about 16 or 17 more yeah, girl characters. More. We need some musical interludes yeah. too. <laughs> yes, please. It also reminded me a little bit of the last slumber party. Um, yeah. And a little bit like offerings, you know, that's these, regional horror films but this one it was trying to do something original i'll say that much it didn't accomplish it but it tried Uh, it's a real humdinger of a film (laughs) 
uh, I was so shocked when when uh, you helped me acquire the film that it wasn't a VHS rip, that it was a freaking DVD, like a really nice oh, yeah. DVD rip. And I was like, what? And then I remembered just before we started recording that this freaking guy directed something I bought but never watched mm-hmm. called Alien Outlaw. Mm-hmm. And I bought it based on the cover and then put it on one day and I said, I don't want to watch this and turned it off and then sold it. Yeah, that's his Raised only other, roof. that's Phil Smooth's only other movie. Um, it is, I think, much more broadly comedic than this one is. They're both fun. I would recommend maybe going into them with the Rift Tracks versions first, honestly. Did they do um, Rift Tracks of both? They did both of them, yeah. Oh shit, that's hilarious. Phil Smooth, these were the only two movies he directed. He did a um, a short film just last year called The Little Ghoul Girl Grows Up. I don't know. I don't oh, know bless her heart. But he has worked on a bunch of things in like weird, small capacities. He was a miscellaneous crew on Kevin Smith's movie Tusk. <laughs> the, the, the stoner movie that was conceived on a podcast. His actual title there, I believe, is Production Consultant. I don't even mm. know what that means. He did, as a producer, uh, mostly a line producer, he did a couple interesting things. He was associate producer on The Boneyard. Have you seen that one? No, but I know of it. Phyllis especially Diller. from its, uh, the cover. On yeah, the it's, board. that one is so much fun. Definitely cool. see that one. And another one that people have said good things about, I haven't seen it. It's one of those uh, After Dark films, The Grave Dancers. Yes, I like that. That's a good one. Yeah, people have said that. I haven't seen it. He was production manager on Frederick Friedel's Axe. That's crazy. What? Yeah, Axe. That's fucking crazy. In that's 74. Like, that's way before he did any other stuff, too. That is a freaking famous, speaking of regional horror films. Yeah. Wow. He also was production manager on Hellraiser 3. <gasps> And That's close to my heart. Children of the Corn 2. I have seen that, but I don't remember it. <laughs> Both of those in the same year. What? Um, and the Incredible. weirdest thing, and it's a weird credit, he was also um, the, uh, what does it say? Budgeting development only, uncredited, on the 1996 Crucible with Daniel Day-Lewis and Winona Ryder. That's definitely his most... Uh, his most legit thing. It sounds like they made him sign a contract and he wouldn't overemphasize his like involvement in the movie. That's so specific. <laughs> he also he worked on the um he did budgeting for the uh, Stephen Summers Jungle Book and something I guess. Ooh. So you know he had a bit of a career. Um, but yeah, it's oh yeah he did, he was a boom operator on the Hunger Games uncredited. <laughs> <laughs> Again, Damn. contractually obligated not to overemphasize his involvement. Can't claim it. Can't claim anything <laughs> else. Oh, see, Phil. see, look at that. If, if you if you dare to dream, <laughs> man, oh man, that's um, fucking hilarious. There is somebody else in this. Most people who worked on this movie have nothing really to their credit, except for the cinematographer. Uh-oh. Uh Which in this movie is, you know, not much you can really say about it. I mean, it's fine. It, it didn't look too bad. Yeah, I would like to see this restored to see what it really looks like. He, as a um, cinematographer, like, you know, doing doing it all on his own, it doesn't have much. I mean, he basically has uh, the Dark shit. Power and Alien Outlaw, but then he also has that um, that Wilco documentary, I'm Trying to Break Your Heart. This is this is Paul Hugin? Yeah, Paul or Hugin. Or Hewen. Hewen, maybe, yeah. Hewen. What the fuck? Um, but as a DP for the second unit, He has done so much shit and is doing stuff now. He did the last two Avengers movies. He did the Godzilla movie from this year. He's doing the Birds of Prey movie right now. Uh, Stranger Things. Venom, Baywatch, Expendables 3, Born Legacy. This motherfucker lives in a mansion. If he doesn't live in a mansion, he's doing it wrong. But he's also done a lot of interesting horror stuff, too. Yes, he like He did uh, Drag Me to Hell. He did all three screams. He did Cursed. Well, there is a fourth scream. I'm sorry. Hold on. Hold on. Don't, don't drag me. Don't First drag me. assistant camera on iced. I know. You were getting... I was getting there. <laughs> I'm skipping ahead because this is the exciting stuff here. Well, he also did... He was camera operator on Mulholland Drive and on Lost Highway. Um, he Simon did, is freaking out right now. He did uh, the first and third Austin Powers. <laughs> he Speaking did, of David Lynch. 
he did he was second camera operator on uh one the second episode of that uh other david lynch mark frost tv show on the air whoa um he did a paul bartell movie scenes from the class struggle in beverly hills miracle mile lady in white the prince documentary sign of the times dude this I guy has had a career holy shit yeah pretty cool pretty cool ruby oh not that ruby not, not that the, ruby not, not the good yeah, ruby i'm not sure what ruby this is and the one about jack ruby <laughs> this is a danny aiello <laughs> ruby. boring <laughs> dude but yeah pretty awesome career that guy's definitely doing doing all right wow i'm i'm looking at a movie i'm trying to remember what this movie is it's called body slam what the fuck is Body Slam? Body Slam seems like it should be the second Hulk Hogan movie. No <laughs> it's Hulk not Hulk. about it's not about punk bands. It's about a down in his luck music manager who's having a hard time. I just got bored reading that. Body Slam. Roddy Piper's in it. Holy shit! Charles Nelson Riley's in it. Look out, world! This is not interesting. <laughs> Help, folks out there! If you've made your friends regional horror film one day you'll be working on a freaking marvel movie <laughs> making huge ass money working with freaking famous Just, ass people i love it as of today the second unit director on this movie <laughs> no it's the cinematographer of this movie is the second unit director of photography on the top grossing movie of all time phil smoot calls him every day like hey I got a I got a screenplay I've been carrying around since I stopped making my own movies. Help. It's called Darker Power. <laughs> it's called slightly less racist power. <laughs> anyway. Whew, I'm drained, dude. This movie drained my dark power right out of me. <laughs> the uh, kit, the kittens didn't even crash the party. Man. God, Gorgon, Gorgon and Spasmo did not make cameos, so I'm sure that'll change as they get older. Oh, yeah, for sure. Oh, my God. Well, I'm going to go uh, dump my head in a toilet to clear, you know, cool off. I'm going to go stare at my Blues Brothers poster for a while. Fucking have a, another Diet Coke. I'm going to go uh, uh, meditate in my power spot. <laughs> oh, I'm going to go hang out in the trinket room. You know what we say at the end of all these movies? If we can't fix it, throw Throw it away! away. (laughs) (laughs) On that note, bye folks. Hello, This is the Doom Show is a proud member of the Legion Podcast Network. Please check out the other shows at legionpodcasts.com. If you want more of Hello, This is the Doom Show, check out doomedmoviethon.com or hellodoomedshow.podomatic.com. You can also follow us on Twitter at doomedmoviethon or email the show doomedmoviethon at gmail.com. We're also in the air. Look up. If you enjoyed this show, then make sure you check out the other great shows on the Legion Podcast Network, like Cinema PsyOps, Cinema Beef, Devour the Podcasts, Duncan and Bo Come Correct, Exploding Heads Horror Movie Podcast, Friday the 13th, Get Slayed, The Hell Ming Power Hour, Hello, This is the Doom Show, Hero Hero Go Show, Kill the Cast, Underwater Kaiju from Outer Space, Jerry Hates Action, Legion After Dark, Mental Health, Obsessive Cinema, Discourse, Pick Six Movies, The Podcast by the Cemetery, The Podcast on Haunted Hill, The Psycho Semantic Podcast, Rick Radio, House of Wax, Dude Looks Like the 80s, Rabbit and Red Radio, The Shadecast, Short Bus Cinema, Two Drink Minimum Commentaries, The VD Clinic, Who Will Survive Horror Podcast, and Witch vs. the Doomsday Clock. With such a widespread of shows, there is guaranteed to be a niche for you to fall in love with. Horror, politics, movies, books, sex, music, commentaries, health, video games, kaiju, action, news, comedy, and opinions that would most likely get you killed in some parts of the world. We are proud to bring you some of the best podcasting in the world. Check us out at www.legionpodcast.com, iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, YouTube, and any other dark corner of the internet where podcasts can be found.